his first here. Bingo. Wait a minute. What a grab. Demons fans on their feet. It is inside Melbourne time for another week, but this is no ordinary week. Katie Price, welcome to you. With thanks to Zurich, uh, it's finals time. I know, how good. I'm absolutely pumped. Cannot wait for next Friday night. We've been waiting just a lazy 12 years, so, uh, well, the drought's over. It's time to time to soak it all in, but what a rich reward to actually be, uh, to get a, a home final in front of uh, in front of our fans. The MCG, Friday night footy in front of, um, in front of what should be a super crowd. Yeah, I've absolutely loved seeing all the, the members' tweets and messages on social media about grabbing their tickets and everything. Um, I think everyone's just so excited and to do it the way we did against GWS was fantastic. Once they got their tickets, that is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ticketek. Hey, we've got a, a really special guest um, in the house today joining us here on the podcast, a man who has... Um, um, really carved out a few sensational weeks on the field, none other than Sammy Wiedemann. Sam, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Welcome it's to the podcast. To on, guys. Jeez, it's been a, a great few weeks for you. You must be, well, are you pinching yourself? What's the, what's the sort of feeling right now? You're about to suit up and play your first final. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty special. I, I think a few weeks ago, I probably wasn't picking this happening. Uh, like with uh, Jesse going down, I think the opportunity sort of came up and I was I was really wanted to grab that with both hands and I feel like I've put my foot forward and um yeah made a case to play in a final so yeah I'm yeah really pinching myself at this stage and I just can't wait to line up it's gonna be awesome and talk us through it because it, it would be obviously bittersweet in a way you don't want to see one of your teammates go down but at the same time as you say to get that opportunity and and when it's fallen in your lap as well is a pretty nice thing to have yeah, exactly. I, I think uh, with Jesse going down, I was, I was pretty shattered for him. I think we always, such an important player for us and uh, you never want to see someone go, go down with an injury like that. So I, I do wish Jesse all the best. But yeah, in saying that, there was an opportunity that sort of did fall in my lap, I guess. I think I've, I've been putting in work in the VFL and I think that the coaches are always saying that an opportunity could come up at any stage. So yeah, I was, I was lucky enough to get that and um, yeah, sort of taking hold of it. So hopefully I can keep that going and yeah, launch into a final series would be very nice. It's a big responsibility, isn't it, Sam? Like for such a young guy like yourself, um, replacing a bloke like Jesse Hogan, how does that sit with you? Uh, yeah, I think well, there's obviously a little bit of pressure because he is such a fantastic player. So it's a bit of a bit of a role to fill. But I don't know. I think I've just got to come in and play my role, and that's what Goody said to me. He said you don't have to do anything special. Um, you just got to yeah play your role for the team and work with Tommy because Tommy's fantastic. He's had a fantastic year and, he, and he's helped me immensely down there. And mm. yeah, it's just made it, made it a lot easier for me. So I've got a specific role to play and I uh, feel like I've been performing that um, quite well so far. That he has. Uh, I probably downplayed it when I said it's fallen in your lap because your season that you had in the VFL leading up to this uh, has been super consistent. Um, do you, did you feel like you were well placed to make that next step given your form? Uh, yeah, I do feel like it. The um yeah the VFL program is fantastic this year. I think um, the work that Jade Rawlings and Matt Egan and all the coaches down there do to sort of make you perform at, at a level that's required at AFL as well. So they put a lot of work into me and they just make it such an enjoyable environment down there. So and we were flying at that stage. We were, we won to sort of twelve on the trot. So just such a great environment to be around and yeah they just make it so so much easier to sort of um, go into the AFL system and make it as smooth a transition as possible. So. It made it easier. Take us back to last Sunday, if you can. Uh, a sensational crowd in the MCG for member appreciation round. I think it was upwards of 37,000, which was great to see. Um, the first half was, was fairly tight, and then uh, you and the boys managed to kick away after half time. Um, and just the importance of getting that win, and as we mentioned off the top, the home final. Um, the stakes were pretty high, despite it being round 23 and our, our finals position already locked and loaded, Sam. Yeah, so we we had a pretty clear focus of what we wanted to achieve that game, and Jordy Lewis sort of uh, rallied the boys together and said, like, because after last week we were pretty pretty excited, we were buzzing um, after locking in the final spot. But he said, just sort of uh, we got to go back to focusing on the next game at hand, and I think a home final is going to be massive in the scheme of things. So, and he he knows a lot about finals uh, as we are. Uh, just as a we thing all know. or two. Yeah, I so, think he's played in twenty three. Oh wow. Yeah, so he, he just sort of um, spoke about the importance of a home final and how important this week it was. And 
I think, yeah, that's what we did. I think we came out firing and we knew GWS uh, were going to come out strong. Yeah. They are a quality side, but uh, we, we just had to stamp them out early and especially that third quarter, I think we really put the game to bed and um, it was just an awesome effort by the boys. How much belief does it give the group? There was all the questions about not beating a top eight side, but then to finish the season beating West Coast and then GWS, it must give you enormous confidence going into finals footy. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the sort of yeah the way the sort of outside were perceiving us as sort of flat track bullies, I guess, sort of only beating um, teams in the bottom eight, but. I think we had a clear focus of what we wanted to achieve and we, we knew we were going to come up against two strong sides and we wanted to prove a lot of people wrong but we just wanted to show that we could really match it with the best and yeah it's it's that newfound belief I think we have in the group the the confidence we've built over the last few weeks it's been massive and it's going to launch us and hold us in good stead into a yeah a final series coming up. I want to take you to a couple of moments from that match um you starred in both of them. Um, you took a really nice grab on the members' wing there. Uh, right in front of the MCC members, just you knew where your bread was buttered. <laughs> you knew where you were going to get the biggest cheer. There was that. The second one, well, I think it was uh, Southern Stand side, took a nice mark again and, and drilled it from about 45 out on a on a pretty tight angle. Um, I think you just... Uh, do you know where the crowd is and where you're going to get the biggest <laughs> cheers? <laughs> Oh, no. Well, my mates were saying that. They said, oh, you just have to pick the spot where we were. So, <laughs> yeah, it was um, it was good. It was nice. I think uh, it's always nice to take it, to, like, take a grab in front, it's of, a nice in front of that stand, especially the MCC guy. Oh, yeah. They're a loud bunch. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. And, and the, nailing that set shot was uh, was nice as well. I think it just sort of got that nice little curl. And Yeah, I think Brian Taylor was very happy with it in commentary <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, he's always happy with it. He is always him. happy. Yeah, yeah, he was happy with that one. So, yeah, I'll take it for sure. I was going to ask you in the next segment, but I'm going to ask you now because we're talking about all things crowd. And that is, that is the weed a sort of chant which sounds like a bit of a boo a, a weed uh <laughs> d- do you like it are you ready to embrace it because i think the members are ready to just go just go big with it during finals yeah i'll, I'll take it for sure yeah I think it gives me a bit of a buzz and sort of gets me up and about but oh, with my, i think it was my first game i thought i thought they were booing me <laughs> <laughs> like, what have i done what, what's going on but yeah no i was, I was soon realise that they're just chanting weed, so I'll, uh, I'll take that for sure. All right, there you go, members. That's the mission for finals. We're on. Finals. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of them as well. Well, if they get their tickets through a ticket deck. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Katie? Yeah, I just wanted to ask as well, with the, the forward line, one of the absolute standouts for mine, and I think many people would be Jakey Melksham and the way he's going. Um, been a pleasure to watch for you guys. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's had a fantastic year and he's such an important player for us. I think the thing that sort of stands out is his leadership amongst that forward line. Uh, he just brings so much and just especially for a young group like us, I think he just really uh, keeps the level head and um, makes, us, makes us know what roles we have to play and he's really strong with that and it's fantastic because uh, he plays his role to a tee and, and whatever role he gets each week, he just nails it. So he's been fantastic and it's, his performance out in the field has been awesome. So. Thanks to Zurich. Sam Wiedemann in the hot seat this week. Uh, Sam, you want to ask you about another player, James Harms, um, having a, a really standout well, second half of the season especially. Um, how have you found him? Uh, he's playing a great role. Yeah, he is. Uh, the Nut, he's a um, much-loved character of the group. Uh, he's, yeah, he's been fantastic. His second half's been awesome. Uh, I think it's just he's put in a lot of work, work in his game like off the field, and I think mean, he's really listening to his coaches now. So... Yeah, it's it's great to see him sort of shine in, in in the midfield now. He had a few specific roles throughout the middle of the year and he nailed them. So it's good to see him finding a lot, of, a lot more of the footy. And I think just his contest work is second to none at this stage. So, yeah, he's doing really well. Take us through this week. Obviously, Geelong, you've got the, the bye round. How does the week look? When do you start doing your opposition analysis? What have you done this week? Uh, well, Goody's given us a few days off just to sort of relax and get our minds sort of switched off before a big few weeks ahead so that was nice and um, now we're back into back into footy now and so we'll do a match review today and then we'll start to look at Geelong probably uh, later today or tomorrow um, and then really sort of hone in on Friday night so yeah it's all, all back into business now but it was good to get a mental breather and played a bit of golf yeah what do you do yeah yeah so I had a hit a golf with a few mates yesterday and I was good. It didn't hit him well, but I'll, uh, <laughs> it was good to get out in the sun because I haven't had that weather before. But yeah, it's I haven't really been doing a heap, just sort of 
relax and just give them the mind a break and they're yeah, chilling out. That's the way. Uh, talk to us about family. I mean, you come from a, a, a rich bloodlines. Um, your grandfather did some amazing things uh, for the Collingwood Footy Club. And I saw he was in the stands as well at the weekend. And I saw Barras was also in the stands, but on the other side of the ground. Do, do the two, do the two um, you know, interact or chat much? I mean, they were rivals in the day. Yeah, I think they do keep in, keep in touch. But uh, every time I see Barras, he says, yeah, give... Give Murray one of these for me. Give, uh, give him a big jab. Punches my gas. Says, yeah, just pass that on. How so, good's that? Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, they do have a great relationship now, and they were they were rivals back in the day. But yeah, it's pretty cool cool to see them see them chatting now and sort of sharing a lot of stories. Um, but it, to see them both, like dad and grandpa in the crowd, was pretty special. They are uh, organised that during the week, so uh, I don't think you've seen me play since my debut. Amazing. So it, it was cool. Uh, I always love catching up with him. Um, I'll see him tomorrow, so it'd be good to talk more about it then. But, uh, yeah, it's great to see him both there. Colleen would likely to play a big role in this final series as well. How do you think Granddad and Dad would go if you come up against them? Uh, they've both got pretty strong... Well, that's strongly support Collingwood, but... Yeah, well. Nah, ever since I, w- I went to the Ds, they, they've sort of got a soft, soft spot for them now. And, uh, yeah, if we happen to come up against each other, I don't know who they'll support, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. Hopefully me, but we'll see. Do they have any merchandise, any Melbourne merchandise, Sam? Uh, we need to make this happen. Yeah, I know. Well, I've tried to pass on a scarf to Grandad, but... Oh, uh, can you imagine? I don't know if he's, he's chucked that <laughs> on yet. And then uh, their Dad's... Yeah, Dad's sort of embraced the Melbourne Melbourne gear at this stage. Good, so, good. Yeah. So when you uh, when you sit down with your granddad, I mean, when you were drafted, what, what, what did he say to you? He's obviously incredibly proud, but did he offer you any... Any tidbits? Any any advice? Uh, yeah, it was he was there on draft night. The him and dad and I don't know. He sort of um, he he just told me how proud he was of me. He said this is a, a long time um, a long time in the making and you've worked so hard. So it, it was nice. So he, he's I've got his full support and he just said just enjoy it. Uh, work hard and you like you'll get the rewards if you put the work in. So I just took that on board and yeah, it's it's great to have his support around. Does he still give you advice now? Uh, not so much now. He just sort of lets lets me do my thing, and I, I have a pretty strong relationship with my dad, so I'll I'll go to him for a lot of advice and feedback when when I can, and he sort of leaves that to me. So, yeah, I, uh, when I talk to him, we talk about footy, but it's uh, good to just catch up as well. How do you get the shiner, Sammy? Yeah, I copped a knee against West Coast, so Tom Barras just sort of came came in with a knee. I turned around and sort of clipped me, which yeah. was lucky because it could have been a lot worse, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, I was lucky to just get a little little bruise down there. Almost two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's still <laughs> staying strong, so it's not going away, but I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it, that's for sure. Uh, you haven't played Geelong at senior level uh, this year. You played them at VFL level, obviously. The challenge of the Cats, it will be spoken about in the lead-up to this match. It's going to be a huge challenge. Uh, we've, got, we've huffed and puffed, but we haven't been able to blow them down, put it that way um, this year. Um, mentally, how do you go about the challenge that is the Geelong Footy Club because it is a steep one? Yeah, mentally, I think we're, f- we're fired up. Uh, we, we definitely own one. I think the the two two times we played them this year, t- well, they were very, very good good matches to watch. And I think uh, like they're a very strong side and with a great defence. So I think we're just going to have to try and work through that. I think we played some really good footy against them earlier in the year. And I think... There was just a few lapses in the game where that cost us, and I think we're going to make make the most of that and capitalise on that this time around. Hopefully, so. Yeah, the margins just two and three points yeah. this season. It's incredible. You just you know what you're going to get with them, don't you? Yeah, exactly. You know you're going to get a strong contest and uh, pretty well structured side. So mm. I think they're pretty well coached down there, and, and they've got Chris a re- got ruthless. Yeah, that's it. So he's going to be firing them up. That's for sure. If there is a time for payback, Katie, it's now. Like is it, it not? Yeah. MCG what in front of our it. fans. <laughs> Elimination final. We're away. Send them home. Send them home. See you later, Geelong. <laughs> um, and another one from me, uh, all Australian. Uh, congratulations to Max Gorn, um, who's named Ruckman, the all Australian side, and, and Clary, of course, on, on the interchange bench as well. That's a, a great feather in, in their caps, Sammy. Yeah, absolutely. I think Gorn, he's put in a, a mountain of work uh, he, to sort of turn his fitness around and to become the player he's now just a dominant ruckman it's, it's pretty special but you probably don't know him he'll, he'll probably tell you he, do, he does he's, been, yeah oh, absolutely does he's, yeah yeah but yeah 
credit to him. He's put in the work. And, and Clayton, um, I'm really proud of him. He, he's he's done so much to get to where he is now. He's still got so much to so much to go. So I think to be an All Australian at 21, that's pretty special. So um, I'm very proud of him. And yeah, he, he's done a great job. Could be you uh, one day, Sam. Yes, and I think, yeah, you're right, Clary, probably the first of many you would suspect. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Hey, we've got a stack of questions from the outer. Um, we're going to get to them very, very shortly. Well, in fact, after this short break on Inside Melbourne. Back to Inside Melbourne. We're here thanks to Zurich and we've got Sammy Wiedemann with us. It's, it's weed, isn't it? Oh, sorry. So gotta, that's what we're going to say. <laughs> Got to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the people in, like, into it. <laughs> um, they will be. Don't you yeah, worry about will. that, Clint. Sammy, one question we ask each of our guests every week is, is thanks to Zurich, is what do you truly love? What do I truly love? Uh, I think, well, I obviously love my friends and family firstly but I think outside of the club and what I like to do in my spare time I love playing golf I'm not very good at it but it's just sort of a mental breather and uh yeah I don't know I just love getting out we've got a little special group it's called the VGA Tour actually it's a Vermont Golf Association it stands for right. it's, uh, the four, me and me uh, three other mates we uh have a little tournament each each year and it's uh these it's mates outside footy yeah yeah so it gets pretty competitive so yeah that's what uh a lot of my focus goes into outside of the club so is it pretty yeah. important to keep up those friendships outside of the footy club i imagine it would be so easy just to to get wrapped up in everything going on here yeah definitely uh i think uh, they, they've been massive in supporting me i think especially when i want a, a break from footy or if i haven't sort of had a had a good week and or if i haven't played a great game i think they're really good at taking my mind off off things and just sort of help help me enjoy my life i guess and just sort of take my mind off things. So the VGA, the Vermont Golf Association, do you also play with the uh, Melbourne boys as well? Yeah, yeah, I Cause, do. Because they talk, a talk, they talk a big game, like the likes of Brayshaw and, and these types. Yeah, so I'm, I'm playing with Brayshaw and oh, Oscar no. on Sunday, so that's, that's my debut against them. And oh, yeah. it's going to be interesting because they, they do talk a big game and, and Oscar's a very good player. So we'll see how we go and see if uh, Angus is sort of talk as... Yeah, as good as his game. He'll just tell you about that hole in one. That's yeah. all he talks about. Yeah, that is. He he brought his golf club in the whole week after he hit it. So <laughs> pity his game goes to absolute water. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly do us a right. favour, please. Just smash him if yeah, you can. Yeah, I will. I'll try my best. <laughs> On behalf of the inside Melbourne yeah, absolutely. crew. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're a big um, you're a big cricketer as well. So did you grow up playing both cricket and footy? Yeah, I did. Uh, down in Vermont, uh, we uh, we yeah, played cricket and footy down there and played a lot of cricket I do enjoy my cricket especially in the change rooms here we uh, got a pretty competitive bunch down here so it's it's good I love this question yeah. from well there's a stack of cricket questions yeah. from the outer <laughs> from the Melbourne fans this one particularly Brian Hill said Warney had Daryl Cullinan Pigeon and Michael Atherton who is your biggest bunny at the D's biggest bunny yes that's a that's a big one we are um, beauty that one I do we we're sort of each other's bunny Mitch Hannon we we bowled each other and we just always seem to get each other out. It's so weird. We, because we can really both swing swing the tennis ball. So, yeah, it's uh, we've got a pretty good rivalry, me and Mitch, and yeah, it just keeps on flying. All right. So, t tell us about this setup. So, how does it work? Because um, who, who did we have on a couple of weeks ago that sort of gave us a, a bit of an inside look? I can't remember. Was that but Vanders? what was it? Van it was I mean, Vanders. Yeah, it was yeah. as well. So, uh, how does it all work? Um, how do the teams work? Uh, does the does the uh, tennis ball have a bit of electrical tape on it so you get a bit of um, bit, of, bit of swing going? Yep. 
Okay, so we got a... It's a very important question. So we, yeah, we got a 10-metre pitch sort of corner to corner of the locker room with a right. bin up one end. And we've usually whoever wants to play can just run in because we've got a range of different bowlers because we've got heaps of different tennis balls mm. and there is electrical tape involved. Yeah. So the ball can become pretty dangerous yeah. at, at times. Yeah. And then we've got this little iron cricket bat that uh, Paddy McKenna funded, which is good... Uh, Thank you, Patty, for doing that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it just gets pretty heated. And usually between our lunch breaks and after training, we like to throw them down and yeah, it can get pretty competitive down there. Well, I think I'll, I'll give this one a shout out because I, I like the intro. Um, hi, Sam. This is from Smith, mate. Long time supporter, first time question guy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we Solid. like it. Solid. Do you think uh, if you chose cricket, you would be playing for Victoria or even Australia? Absolutely not. I think <laughs> if Cricket Victoria involved a swinging tennis ball and a little iron bat, I think I'd be a chance. But uh, no, nah, not, not at the high level, that's for sure. Any other cricket ones before we, before we move on there? Um, there's, there's been quite a few. I think we've probably covered most of it, though. Oh, very good, very good. Hey, um, let's get to a few more from the outer. I mean, you've had a few so far, but Ellie Campbell wants to know what's been your favourite moment so far playing for the Melbourne Footy Club. I dare say your favourite moment will probably come next uh, Friday night. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I think playing in a final will be amazing. So I think, yeah, th that's definitely to come. But my favourite moment... Uh, probably my debut against the Hawks. Oh, I think Hawthorne. the good win as well. Yeah, it was. I think it was a pretty special win for the club because it sort of uh, really sort of launched us into the future. And I don't know, it was to play in a game like that. The members were all up and about, and I think the the way the team embraced me was fantastic and just made it a really special day. And also the win in the West was pretty special too. Uh, Luke asks, so happy to see you feeling like you believe in yourself, Weeds. What has been the turnaround? Has it been opportunity or a specific role? Uh, I think well, uh, putting a lot of work in the VFL, sort of getting me ready to play, I, th I probably didn't have the, the belief when I was playing AFL earlier in, the, earlier in the season. I think that just comes with confidence. And I think I put in a lot, a lot of work. And, and I think I, I, the last two weeks I've been able to sort of put that together and uh, I don't know I think I, f I feel like I've got the the real belief from from my team and everyone around me now and that's just, yeah, it's fantastic so it just makes it a lot easier to sort of put that out in the field. Chris Musgrove asks do you ever get pressured to move to Collingwood in brackets please don't? <laughs> <laughs> no I'll, the only pressure would probably be from granddad if, if he decides oh uh, yeah do you, want, do you want to chuck on the black and white one day but <laughs> no nah, no nah, not at this stage I've got a pretty um pretty strong support from the, D, the D's people so um, no. who did you back for growing up I was a Richmond fan oh there you go so yeah, yeah. don't right. even bother knocking Collingwood <laughs> <laughs> don't get stuffed yeah. well we don't want him to go to the Tigers we don't want him to go anywhere but no. just, just, just to put the, the Collingwood nuffies back in their place there you go <laughs> that's it so who do you who I, I know when you were drafted you were compared to the likes of Matthew Pavlich um, Tom Lynch I think as well who did you grow up idolising or, or modelling your game on? Uh, early days, I was a big Richo fan. I was, I was a Richo man. Um, I think because I went to a lot of games watching him and just kicking bags and just playing playing so well each each game. So it was pretty good to watch. And then as I was sort of growing up, just sort of as I drifted away from the Tigers a little bit. I love to watch Lance Franklin. I think the stuff he does in the field is amazing. And yeah, it was a pleasure to watch. We're not going to start to see some of the Richo theatrics no. Creeping into your game, are we? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm probably not as emotional as Richo. <laughs> and you're a White Fries boy, is that right? Yeah, White Fries boy. Since uh, and you still obviously we spoke about the friends before, but I think there's a bit of a White Fries type tone to these questions. There's a few creeping in there, so yeah, uh, they still like to to mess around with you, do they? Yeah, they do. The, the Fries boys, we um yeah got a strong relationship with those guys. So yeah, we've had a lot of memories and I'm sure plenty more. Finals footy. There's a question here from uh, from Lockie Osborne. Has playing finals footy always been a dream for you? Absolutely. I, I think uh, yeah, playing finals is that's what you play footy for, I guess. And to hopefully reach the ultimate success, it's it's a pretty special feeling when you think about it. And I'm, I'm very keen to see where this group can go, and hopefully we can uh, get past Geelong and hopefully launch into greater things. Um, one here outside footy. Um, Medi ninety four. What was your first job? My first job, I was a checkout chick at Woolies. <laughs> I lasted seven months, so 
it probably wasn't the job for me because uh, mate, I was a checkout chick at Woolies. Oh, you were. So a, we come from, you know, very similar. Exactly. I you never did a checkout chick Didn't thing. You? No. Really? I, I did waitressing and I was mm. absolutely horrible at it. <laughs> hey, it's you come from good pedigree. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's, you got to start somewhere. What was the problem? What was? Why were you so bad? Ah, uh, well, I, I love talking to the customers. That that was no problem. But it was just I just kept getting sore back and I just got lazier and lazier as the <laughs> as the yeah, shifts went enough. on. And I think my drive to be yeah to go to work every day wasn't wasn't there. <laughs> so you're 21 now, right? Is that right? Yeah, 21. So. 12 years ago, you would have been all of uh, nine, uh, nine. Nine, yep. That's the last time Melbourne played finals Good footy. Maths, Clint. Good maths, uh, Well, <laughs> thankfully. Um, well, do you feel this... I mean, you're too, probably too young to remember the Ds in the finals in 06, but do you feel that the supporter, the supporters sort of coming on this ride with you and just the massive support right now? Yeah, I definitely. I, I think when I was in I was in grade three when they last made finals and I think I've I've a lot of um, Melbourne supporters who I'm really close mates with and I think to see that what they've gone through and then to see the excitement like on their on their faces I was with uh, Ben Gibson who now works at the club and he he was one of my close mates he's a massive Melbourne man and just to see his face I think he just gave me a massive hug he's like oh, I'm so excited for, oh, how for, good. for week one of finals and just something he's been waiting for for so long so it's pretty special to see see how excited it makes the fans katie and i had a similar hug didn't we yeah <laughs> how excited I, 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 i'm pumped <laughs> I, I, I mean i was pumped last week but after watching so i actually had a wedding at the weekend i couldn't be there so i was up on the gold coast but everyone else was out sinking beers on the deck you know and i'm anti-social sitting <laughs> on the couch watching the boys and the, i just i just couldn't get enough yeah it. It's so sensational good. it, it is awesome. so good Talking about the hugs, everyone loves a cuddle at the D's. Yeah. All the the photos and the images oh, from these us. last <laughs> couple of games, a lot of man love going yeah, on. Yeah, there is a lot of man love, especially uh, Christian Matrak is Doesn't a he, big he's leader of that. Yeah, he, uh, he loves to get around Gorny the boys. Gorney and Jonesy, yeah, little cuddles. Yeah, yeah. I think they've they've been through a lot together, so I think yeah, they love a bit of man love those two. And yeah, it's I don't know, it's, we've got a close bunch down here. It's good. I don't know how this has crept in, but there's a question from Aussie Trooper 20. If you were in Star Wars, who would you be? Well, I've never seen Star Wars. There you go. See, I I thought it might have been something, uh, you know, someone infiltrating, knowing full well that you're a Star Wars, you know, nerd or something something similar. Never seen Star Wars. It's it's strange. It's something I've never got into. (laughs) There you go. Anything else? I've never seen it either. Star Wars or Star Trek, couldn't even tell you the difference. There you go. Um, One from NHM Clardy One. Chicken Palmer or steak for the weed? Ooh, uh, steak for sure. Uh, Depends. If I'm feeling like I can treat myself, I'll definitely go Palmer, but you know, usually a steak, nice scotch fillet. It's a question about taking hangers. How much do you love taking a big hanger, getting the jukes out, as you did in front of the MCC members? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't call it a hanger, but uh, I, I do love getting up if I can get my, my feet off the ground. That's, I don't have a massive leap on me, but when I do, I, I don't know, it's, it's pretty cool. Just got to make sure I stick them because if I can get up there and drop it, there's, it's no fun in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paulie asks who's been your biggest mentor in the forward line and what's the main piece of wisdom they've passed on to you uh i think probably over the last it's probably the back half of the year probably jake melksham and probably alex nilborn i think those two are real leaders and probably in, in terms of like in terms of uh sort of working on things i probably didn't think i needed to work on like my communication my positioning all that sort of stuff they've just been massive in sort of helping me and so helping my development in that stage of the game, and they're, yeah, they're both real natural leaders. So they make it a lot easier when you when you go up to that next level. Uh, a couple of injuries last week out of the game. Um, you must feel for feel for those guys. Uh, Dean Kent uh, with his AC, and then uh, obviously Dommer. Uh, Dom actually a silly chance of, of playing um, as it turns out with his with his arm, but. Um, how do you how do you broach that after a, a match a big win you know you're into a, an elimination home final against Geelong and two of your mates have gone down with with injury yeah it, it's disappointing I, I think when we went into the the rooms after the game we were all obviously very excited but then we sort of think that we, we did lose two brothers out there and uh, it's, it's it's a shame for those guys but I, I know they're going to put in a lot of work and they're going to try and get back because it's a massive game I, I know Dom is doing a uh, as much as he can because he, he's a genuine chance but I think Kenty got ruled out a few days ago but 
yeah, it's it's really shattering for those guys because they are really important players. And I, I played a lot with Kenty this year in the VFL, and to see how much work he's done to get to where he is, it's it's disappointing to see it in like that. And just just one more. On, I know you addressed it before, but on Hogs, but has he had a chat to you recently about about what you're about to you're about to experience, and and what's he sort of said to you? What's he, what advice has he got to impart? Yeah, he. He didn't hang his head at all when he got, uh, got mm. injured. I think that was the mm. first thing we all noticed is just ha- how upbeat he was. And he came to me, he said, just take the opportunity and like just be strong, just believe in yourself. And and uh, that's what he tried to pass on because he has a lot of faith in us and he's put a lot of work into me as well. He's a massive support for me and yeah, he did, did a great job in that. And he's, he's kept really close to me, with me at the moment. Obviously losing a, a couple, but it looks like the skip's going to be back. What would it mean to have Jack Viney playing finals footy? It'd be massive. He, he's a very important player for us, obviously, and to have your skipper back, it's, it's a pretty big buzz for the group. Uh, he's obviously been putting in so much work. Uh, it's really frust- it was really frustrating for him going down again late in the year, but yeah, to see, to see him come back and he's going to be able to play in, in the first final, it's going to be pretty special for the group, that's for sure. Joel Selwood's on notice. He's actually, <laughs> he's probably crying in a little, in a corner. Do just, you reckon uh, Joel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he won't <laughs> no. be. <laughs> but Can you imagine those two? Oh. Yeah, he'll go straight to Selwood and that'll be sensational to see, won't oh, it? Won't it? Two bulls going at it. Be yeah, good. yeah. Uh, no, it's going to be a, a big, big uh, night at the MCG next Friday night. Oh, jeez, I just can't, I won't be able to sleep. Well, I think <laughs> this might be a good question to end on from the outer. Jordan asks, will we win our first final against Geelong? Will we win? I, th- I think we will. I think we're, we've got a lot of confidence as a group. I think we're going to yeah, really take it up to Geelong and hopefully we can really really put a good game together and get the job done because we're all, we're all up and about for it. It's the first final in a long time, so we're not going to let this one slip, that's for sure. So you were saying before that Barass, when you see him, sort of says, give your granddad one in the guts. Yeah. Have you actually done it? I, I, I try to. This pass is it from Barass. <laughs> yeah. Bang. Yeah, yeah. He always, and then he, and then, and then uh, yeah. Granddad usually just grabs me and gives me a choke hold and say, yeah, give that one back to him when you <laughs> next time. So yeah, I like to pass that on. It's a little. We should yeah, get the good t- get the two together for the elimination final. That'd be good. Yeah. Just yeah. Have a little scrap in the stands, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like old times. Each other. You n- never know what can happen. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us on Inside Melbourne, uh, Sammy. It's been great to have your company. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Good stuff. And, uh, geez, looking forward to Friday night. We'll have a, another episode of Inside Melbourne for you. Uh, in the lead-up to that big, big match, it's going to be a real